Hi there, Stampin' Peace friends. Happy Wednesday evening, September 7th. Um, I hope you're having a great week. We're halfway there, it's hump day. Um, while we're waiting for more people to get on, I will just give you a quick preview of my Apple Harvest class to go, uh, featuring the Apple Harvest stamp set and the exclusive Apple Blossoms dies that are available uh, in September only. September only is what we're told. Um, I'm hoping that these will come back, but I don't know that at this point. We've just been told it's a September only promotion. So uh, with option one, you get that bundle. And then with option two, you get all the supplies to make these cards. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm gonna hold it over here instead. Whoops, whoops. My camera's backwards, I flipped it so you would see things correctly. And it's hard for me to get used to where to hold things. But the class includes supplies to make eight cards to each of those four designs. Um, you can buy just the card supplies and that's $32 with shipping or you can buy the um, Option one, which is the card supplies plus the bundle, the stamp set and dies and shipping included for 72. And of course, um, I always sell the PDF tutorial only for $15. And you can find that information on stampinpeace.com. And uh, if you're having trouble finding the information, but you're at, interested in the Apple Harvest class to go, um, please notify me and I will send you all of that information. Um, today I was searching for um, just some kind of inspiration, not just a, a, um, a specific idea, but just sort of some inspiration. And today was pretty much an all computer work day for me. And um, I went to post something on um, social media and I saw it's National Beer Lovers Day. So I, there was my inspiration. So tonight I'll be featuring the Brood For You bundle. Um, it's a great stamp set for beer lovers. Uh, doesn't have to be masculine. Uh, that can be used for lots of different occasions and it has a great coordinating die set to go with it as well. So there I picked my bundle. Then I was thinking, okay, what should I show project-wise? And somebody recently emailed me and told me how much she likes my tutorials and my directions, um, my demo live demonstrations because, because I go at a nice pace um, and my directions are very clear. And she wondered if I had a tutorial for the angled gatefold card. And I said, no, I don't but I would put that in a Facebook Live soon. So um, it's happening sooner than I thought, but tonight's the night for the gatefold, or the angled gatefold card, and we're featuring the Brood For You bundle. I'm going to flip my camera around now, and while I do that, please share this live video so, so that others can join in um, tonight's card making demonstration. Alrighty, so I'm going to show you my sample first and then I'll show you how to make it. So this is the angled gatefold card with a belly band. You could certainly make it a gatefold card without a belly band, you know, decorate the front here however you like, but I thought it would be fun to put a belly band on it that slides on and off. And then inside you have plenty of room to write a message or stamp another sentiment, if you will. And one thing about the gatefold card, it doesn't really matter if it's right over left or left over right as far as the flaps go. Um, maybe it depends if you're using two different designer series papers like I am. 
Maybe it depends on which you want to be the more prominent one showing, um, but certainly there's no right or wrong. So I'm going to break this down into easy to follow steps for you. And when it gets posted to my blog in the next few weeks, uh, next few days, not weeks, days, um, hopefully even tomorrow, um, I already have the templates made out for you. So you'll get that on the blog post. And by the way, I have to tell you, usually I do the templates after the live. I came down here, got all set, was just about ready to click live, and I realized it was only seven o'clock Eastern time, not eight o'clock Eastern time. Now, when does that happen that I'm actually ahead of schedule? <laughs> so I took the time to do those templates up really quick. I'm um, cutting for a class to go, uh, but it was just kind of made me laugh because I feel like I'm always rushing in here last minute. Um, but yeah, today I was a whole hour early. I would have been confusing people had I jumped on that that at that time. Okay, to make the angled gatefold card, you're going to start with a piece of cardstock for your base, which measures five and a half by 11 inches. Okay, five and a half by 11 inches. You can see that here, five and a half by 11 inches. And then we need to score at three and three eighths. and seven and five eighths but I also want to show you that if you flip this end around it ends up being three and three eighths from both sides okay so if you like that direction better three and three eighths from each side um, no, that is the same thing as three and three eighths and then seven and five eighths, all right? And that makes our centerpiece five and a half by four and a quarter, which is the standard size um, for our finished A2 cards. The next thing you're going to do, and um, usually I do pencil, but because this is black, I'm using a pen, and this might be difficult for you to see on the video, but we will do our best. From the top, I wanna to mark down one and a half inches on both sides. So for this left side, I'm just going to line it up with the ruler on my paper trimmer and make a little dot there. Can you see my little dot? Then I need to do the same thing on the other side. And mark that. Then I need to be one inch from, well, let me do it like this so we're not mixing up. So I still got the top. I've measured down one and a half inches on each side, the left and right, and made a dot. Now on the bottom edge, on the bottom edge, I want to mark one inch from the left side and one inch from the right side. So to do that, I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to one inch there and making my little mark. And then I'll take it to one inch on the other side. And where I'm making the mark is actually the cutting groove, but that's an easy way. And then I'm going to do some angled cuts. On the top two dots, I'm going from the dot to the score line, the dot to the score line. And I think it's easiest to keep track of all the little um, markings and which direction your angles are going if you work from the top to the bottom. So do both of the top corners first. So again, one and a half inch mark to the tip of that score line. And you want both of those to sit right in the cutting groove. Now, 
from here, I'm going to go from this one eighth or one and a half inch mark to the one inch mark. One and an eighth in, or one and a half inch mark to the one inch mark on the bottom. Again, this is called an angled gatefold card. So now there is my card base. I'm going to fold the left and right flaps in and use my bone folder to give those edge uh, score lines a nice crease. On the inside, I'm going to add my basic white measures five and a quarter by four inches. So our usual standard size for an eight, the inside of an A2 card. Plenty of room to stamp a sentiment or image or just leave it blank for writing a note. And now I want to add the DSP. There's a couple things you can do. I'm gonna give you a couple choices. I'm going to put DSP on both flaps, but I'm using a different DSP on each one. Oh, Kathleen, I'm glad to hear you say that. Make it look so easy. That is my goal. That is my goal. When I show something, I want all of you to feel um, confident enough to try and make it yourself. So I'm happy to hear that. So. I could, um, as I'm going to do, put DSP on both sides. You might leave one side blank and put DSP on just one of the flaps and not both. You could cut cardstock and um, use embossing folders. And maybe you want to use one of those embossed cardstocks for one of the flaps. There's all different ways you can um, mix and match, okay? Tanya, the um, videos, the live videos are always on the site. You just click, um, I think it's the word more and or media perhaps, and then click videos and you can find it. And of course, in a couple of days, I will have this on my blog and YouTube channel as well. Now here's a tip. When you are putting DSP on both sides, the template I'm going to give you really only um, makes the angle for the right flap. But if you would do the opposite, then it would give you the DSP for the left flap. Here's a way that you can cut both of those at the same time. So I want these to be the front flaps. I'm going to put them back to back, all right, back to back. Because then when I cut, like the template shows, the other one will be cut in the opposite direction, okay? So I'm using the same measurements as before. I want to mark one and a half inch from the top. And then on the bottom, I want to mark one inch from the left side. Okay, we're working on the left side. One and a half inches from the top and one inch from the left side right along the bottom edge. And now I'm ready to do the same kind of cutting. Okay, I'm going to start at the one and a half and cut up to the right top corner. And then I'm going to cut from that one and a half inch mark to the one inch along the bottom edge. And the only trick here is holding these together which really is not that hard. Okay. 
So now I've got my two pieces and I'm ready to put that on my card base, which seems to have just disappeared. Oh, here it is. Got tucked under the, the uh, templates. So now you can see I'm ready to add these. And by the way, I don't think I mentioned this. Look what paper this is. This is from that fall paper in our mini catalog. I really like that um, Stampin' Up! gives us different patterns and colors on each side of the designer series paper. That way it makes it more versatile. Of course, I love black and white because there's so much you can do with it. I especially like black and white with a pop of color. And I think Stampin' Up! has recognized that so many of us really like to work with black and white designer series paper. So I, I'm, I like to see it. So now I'm just going to glue these to the front flaps. And I'm using multi-purpose glue just because we're not used to working with these kinds of angles. And this way, if I need to scoot it around to get um, an even border all the way around, I can. All right, so here is our card base finished. All right. Now I have a piece of one and a quarter inch by 10 inches of designer series paper. So here's a bit of pop of color. Now I'm going to wrap my closed card base with this. And I want it to fit pretty snug, but not too tight because it should move easily up and down. Okay. And Notice that I'm putting the seam of this right in front. And that's because I'm going to be able to cover it with my finishing stamped pieces, okay? Stamped and die cut, or if I had a sentiment. But if I can hide that seam by what I'm putting on the front, I do. And then it makes the back just look clean and really professional looking. Now we do need to be careful when we're gluing the ends. So I put a little bit there and then a little bit on the inside or back side of the other end. And that way I have the glue only where I need it and it's not going to stick to my card. And I, I really don't like to score my strip for the belly bands because um, sometimes the thickness of just the cardstock being folded kind of changes those score lines. So this way, I just wrap it, and when I feel like it's pretty good, I just kind of pinch it with my fingers. And you can see it's pretty snug, but it still is moving easily. All right, so there is the basic angled gatefold card. Obviously, I want to jazz this up a bit. And as I mentioned, we're going to be using the Brood for You bundle. I've got some dies already pulled out here. And I've got all of my stamps ready. I'm going to be stamping the beer mug and the beer glass in black memento ink. Oops, I need to scoot up a little bit. And I'm going to stamp the what the, the beer foam also with the memento black ink. And I'm doing them on the same page because there is a die to cut out each of these shapes. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp the beer glass here and the foam for that one up above because I'll also die cut that. And oops, I will stamp the sentiments. Where did it go? 
Guess I didn't pull that one out. So this is a birthday sentiment. And I've got a th three quarter inch strip. And this is a little long, but that's okay because I'm going to cut it later to the size that I need. And when I stamp this um, sentiment, I want to take it fairly close to the banner end. And then based on how I position it on my card front, I may want to cut off a little bit at the end. But better to have a little too much than not enough. To me, it just makes it a little bit easier than trying to figure out the exact measurement of the banner that you need or of the strip for the banner that you need. Now I'm stamping with crushed curry. I don't know about you, but I kind of felt like this was a good beer color. I don't know. And I know there are different kinds of beers and different colors and all that. But. So now I'm ready to fill my mug. And to fill the beer glass. There's probably some fancier name for that than beer glass. But I don't know. And now I'm ready to die cut. So let me move all this out of the way, bring my dies. I'm using my mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. So super handy, you know how I love it. And look, I was cutting something earlier and I got all these little dots on there. I think we'll be okay. So first I'll cut the beer mug. We could have even um, stamped with more of a brown color, like early espresso. We could have root beer in there, right? Root beer in a frosty mug. That reminds me of um, days as a kid, if we got to go to the root beer stand. And then we lived in, um, Lafayette, Indiana for a year and when our kids were little and um, they had a place called Dog and Suds. So you know what that is, right? Um, hot dogs, chili dogs, and root beer floats. Dog and Suds. That was a favorite place that we took our kids to. All right, so those cut out really well. Set these to the side. And now I'm ready to cut out the beer glass and the foam that goes with it. If you feel like you want to use some washi tape to hold your dies in place, that never hurts. Okay, so now we're ready to put the finishing touches on our angled gatefold card. And by the way, I have these um, teeny tiny little magnets that I bought from Amazon quite a while ago for, they're real thin, for a project I was doing. And um, you know how you have to buy so many in a pack or whatever. And these were left and they were just sitting here in my magnetic um, little bowl. And I started thinking, you know, it's really easy just to use this instead of putting out that whole um, magnetic bowl and it taking up more space, more of my workspace. So I've just been doing this. Isn't it clever? So anyways, think about that if you've got extra little magnets hanging around. 
All right, I am going to, first of all, adhere the suds, the beer suds, or the beer foam, to each of these. And I'm just going to use the tiny, narrowest. Oh, Tanya, you live in Indiana, right? Julie, you too. You guys know what I'm talking about when I say dog and suds. Sometimes I think we just need a trip. And let me tell you, there were quite a few of those root beer floats spilled in my minivan. But you know what? It was worth it because it's one of the um, best, best memories I have of my kids growing up. And one that I think they really enjoy too. I had some of my glue in the wrong place over here, so I'm going to have to clean that up, and now it's sticking to my fingers. If you, you may have noticed that I pulled out my silicone mat. I like to do this with um, tiny projects that I have to glue, because you know how it is. This glue kind of gets everywhere, and it gets real sticky and tacky. But if you do this on your silicone mat, number one, it protects your work surface. And number two, you know, I guess I could have glued that underneath, but I feel like the foam should be on top. Um, the other thing is when this dries, it literally just rubs off. You don't have to wash it or anything, super easy. Oh, and I love that idea, using the puff paint for the beer foam or the root beer foam. I love that idea. Fabulous, fabulous. Okay, and now I'm just going to put these onto my, I might change it up. Um, put these onto, nope, I like the other way better onto my belly band. So here you can see the reason why I left the strip a little long, because I wasn't exactly sure where I was putting it. And I think that looks good. Again, I'm using the multi-purpose glue so that if I need to move it around a bit, I can. Okay, I think that's going to be, oops, no, I need, I'm off the edge of the card. Scoot a little closer in there. Yeah, I'm going to trim off just a, the slightest bit. Because I don't want it, the left end of the banner sticking out past this glass of beer. I was just thinking too, you could even add some Wink of Stella on the mug so it looks like a frosty mug. And I'll pop those up on dimensionals. Again, keep in mind where you're putting your dimensionals because you want them to land on that belly band not on the card front. Again, think about where you're putting those dimensionals. It's the foam and the top of this beer mug that are going to be on the belly band, the top half. So I want to keep my dimensionals there. There we go. And there you have it, your um, angled gatefold card with a belly band. So what do you think? 
angled gate fold card with a belly band. Now keep in mind, you don't have to have a belly band on here. You could just decorate the front of your card. Um, that would be okay too, but sometimes I just like doing the belly band for these um, various gatefold cards. And I think it turned out pretty well. Who would like to possibly receive this card? Anybody? Can you think of somebody you'd send it to? My first thought is my son-in-law. Andrea and John like going to um, like different local craft breweries, even if they're traveling, um, and try what's local. <laughs> so that's kind of fun, but um, that's what I would do with it. Um, although his birthday is until April, so I'll have to stash it away until then. While you're thinking about that, go ahead and type in the comments, brewed for you, if you would like to um, possibly receive this card. Anybody who types in the comments now, brewed for you, gets their name entered into a drawing to receive this card. And I just got a bunch of cards ready to mail from last week's Facebook Lives. Um, uh, winners have been notified or posted, I should say, um, recently in um, the posts that have those original Facebook Live videos. So lots of happy mail going out in the next few days. Um, and it feels so good to be caught up on that because that can be very time consuming along with all the other things I send out. Here is another gatefold card I made. And this is for Halloween. And the DSP I used for this is from that mega pack. What's it called? Celebrate Everything. And I believe this is a host option in the mini, yes, in the mini catalog. So if you have a $150 purchase, you can use some of your Stampin' Rewards to get this. If you have a Stampin' Up! party with me or a private class, and um, I'd love to help you get some free products with Stampin' Rewards, and this could be one. But look at this. This paper is, let me hold it in such a way that I can show you better. So it's got Christmas, and on the back side is a different pattern than the front. I love this one for like celebrations, 4th of July. There's some evergreens with the bright green on the back, fun ornaments with red and bows. Here's a great blue. Of course, we love timber prints. Here's the Halloween ones I just used. So lots of fun patterns and prints and colors. Some are themed for holidays. Look at this one for 4th of July. I love that. Could be New Year's, could be a graduation, any kind of big celebration. Um, I love that diagonal stripe. Reminds me of fruit stripe gum. Does anybody remember fruit stripe gum from, I'm probably dating myself, I'm 57, but I remember that was one thing our grandma used to buy for us on our little outings. But really a great pack of paper. Um, so you might wanna consider that. And if you love the paper, but you don't wanna place a $150 order to use your Stampin' Rewards to get that, notify me, I will help you. Um, and we can um, do something in person if you're local to me, or we can do a virtual Stampin' Up! party, which is really fun and really easy. You don't have to clean your house. You don't have to go grocery shopping. Um, you invite people, I do the work. Um, and I'm hoping to get some of these scheduled, these virtual Stampin' Up! parties um, scheduled soon because I have a whole new plan for them. Um, something I picked up at the... Um, backstage event for leaders a couple weeks ago. And um, one of my friends does these and has had great success. So she shared with me how she does it. And she said her customers absolutely love it. Um, and even the ones that had in-person parties in the past are now wanting to do the virtual because they're just easier. And for some reason, 
they're taking in more sales. But anyways, talk, think about it and then talk to me. I would love to help you earn some free product. <gasps> That's right, Kathy, the, the zebra. I forgot about the zebra. Yes, you are right. Okay, I'm going to quickly scroll back here and see if I missed any questions. Oh, lots of you remember the Fruit Stripe gum. Michelle's definitely trying the angled gatefold card. That makes me happy. Woohoo! You all can do this. I know you can. Brood for you. Let's see. Just give me a moment. I like to... Anne, I like that idea. You need to make some sympathy cards. Um, I do too, in fact. Um, and Anne says she'll use this layout for that. And I know it'll be just beautiful and so appropriate for that reason. Yes, a lot of times you can use the belly bands to bring out the colors. Awesome. Okay. All right. I didn't see any questions. Oh, Diane, you've seen several of these. Like I said, this wasn't really even on my radar, but um, a customer, a viewer, um, emailed me recently saying that she likes my directions and my tutorials, the pace of my lives, and did I have a tutorial for um, the angled gatefold card? And I said no, but I would work it into um, a uh, Facebook Live in the near future. So I'm not sure if she's watching tonight, but I'm going to say good night and then go ahead and email her um, with the link for this video in case she missed it. Beth, yes, just check out the um, replay. It will always be here on Stampin' Peace with Mary Nabe on Facebook. And in the next, probably in the next two days, I will have it on my blog along with the templates. I made some templates, gonna take some pictures of those. Um, and I don't know about you, but when I try a new fold or something and there's a template, I just print out, you know, whether it be a picture or whatever, I just print it out um, and stick it in a file. Just makes it quick and easy. And of course there's always Pinterest and Google and whatever to give us the information. Everyone have a good night. Thanks for joining me and I will see you Friday afternoon at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Until then, happy stamping.